tunnels have been around for thousands of years, some big and some small, and all serving different purposes, be it for science, research, or war. Join me as we take a look at 15 of the biggest tunnels throughout human history. Number 15. Derinkuyu, Turkey All right, kicking off the list is one of the oldest series of tunnels you'll ever hear about. If you ever travel to Turkey, then you should check out the underground cities of Derinkuyu in Cappadocia. Dating back to 1200 BC, Derinkuyu is just under 200 feet below the Earth's surface, composed of a series of cities connected by miles and miles of tunnels and caves, which have all been carved right into the area's volcanic rock. The city is multi-leveled, and the deepest regions go down about 300 feet into the Earth. This underground metropolis was home to about 20,000 people, and once produced lots of amenities like wine and oil, but was also home to stables, cellars, and chapels. There's also a large 180-foot ventilation shaft to keep fresh air circulating and provide water to the villagers. In total, there are over 600 entry points into the city, which were largely used to hide and protect citizens during wartime. And the story behind the discovery of this deep series of structures is a funny one. In 1963, a Turkish man was tearing down the walls of his home basement and stumbled across Derinkuyu. Since then, it's remained an incredibly popular tourist destination. Number 14. Baths of Caracalla Much like us modern folk, the Romans kept things pretty clean, and they loved to bathe. But they didn't have those fancy showers that we have in our houses. Instead, the Romans scrubbed down in baths, giant public baths. And probably one of the coolest Roman artifacts is the Baths of Caracalla. Also known as Thermae, these public baths were a literal hot spot for the ancient populace. The Baths of Caracalla were built between the years 212 and 216 AD, during the reign of, you guessed it, Emperor Caracalla. But what makes this area so interesting is that it's a huge complex instead of just a small and boring basin. Think of it as a spa made of stone. But this spa was able to hold about 1,600 Roman bathers at a time, and even had a library and wrestling school way back in the day. So you could get your learning on and clean yourself off after a solid workout. The Baths of Caracalla were able to withstand the test of time, remaining in use all the way into the 6th century, until the complex was sacked by the Ostrogoths during the Gothic War, where the hydraulic installations were unfortunately destroyed. So while most of the walls do remain, there's no need to bring your shampoo anymore. Number 13. Naor They really loved their tunnels back in ancient times. Naor is a series of tunnels still standing today in northern France. In all, there are about two miles of tunnels connecting 300 separate rooms, all tucked nicely 100 feet below the surface. And two miles may not sound like much, but you should be amazed considering all of this was built around the 4th century AD. No boring machines, no bulldozers, no nothing. Every inch of Naor is made either by hand or by crude digging mechanisms. The entire site was originally part of the Roman quarry, but as wars began to rage during the Middle Ages, the locals found it better suited as a hiding place amidst all the turmoil. When the word finally spread to the masses that Naor was one of the safest places to be, the population eventually peaked with around 3,000 calling the tunnels home. Carved right into the rocks as well were stables, wells, chapels, even shops and bakeries. Despite being a mass of tunnels in the dark, Naor was a well-oiled machine. But as time went on and wars stopped and regimes toppled, people began to leave the tunnels until they were eventually sealed off. It wasn't until the 19th century that they were reopened as a tourist attraction. Number 12. Vialichka Salt Mine From the 13th through the 21st century, workers were pulling salt from the Vialichka Salt Mine in Krakow, Poland. The mine goes on for nearly a thousand feet into the earth and stretches on for another whopping 108 miles. The mines have a royal history and have been rebuilt several times over the course of 700 years, with more and more tunnels being added over the years, winding in and out of one another. But what makes this mine so interesting is that as time went on, the mines evolved. There are chapels, workhouses, and storehouses built into the salt and rock. Statues and other decorative elements have also been preserved over time, and some of the workers' tools have been left behind and remained untouched, along with some of their more complex medieval machinery. While the mines no longer serve their original purpose, a very special tour route was created in the 19th century, which still remains very active today. 
The Vilichka salt mine serves as a brilliant reminder of the resilience and ingenuity of bygone eras of human history. Number 11. Sala Silver Mine For over 400 years, Sweden was one of the world's major silver producers, as much of its wealth came from what was once referred to as Sweden's treasure chamber by King Gustav in the 1500s. Today, the treasure chamber is home to the Silver Mine Hotel, and while the hotel offers plenty of excitement above ground like high wire courses, golf, and zip lining, the real fun begins when guests travel underground. How deep does the Silver Mine Hotel go? Try 500 feet deep into the earth. The majority of the hotel staff stays above ground, meaning everyone down there will have the place to themselves, as long as they're not claustrophobic. And while there are plenty of chandeliers hanging from the ceiling and hotel rooms carved right into the rock, the hotel still has conserved much of the mine's history. There are plenty of plunge pools and labyrinthine tunnels to keep people occupied and curious for hours. There's also some of the best cave diving in the world to be found here. There are lots of plunge pools, and because there's no current, the waters are perfectly and beautifully still. The caves have also been untouched by oxygen, so the rock is perfectly preserved, making for a once-in-a-lifetime, albeit expensive, experience deep below the surface of the Earth. Number 10. Kola Super Deep Borehole During the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union were racing to see which country could do things bigger and better. The project known as the Kola Super Deep Borehole began in the 1970s on the Russian border with Norway on the Kola Peninsula with the sole purpose of drilling as deep into the Earth's crust as technology would allow. The result is a massive hole that goes over 40,000 feet down. It took the Soviet researchers about 20 years to drill that far, and they only reached about one-third of the way into the Earth's crust. There were some on the project who said that they dug a hole to hell, and if you listen hard enough, you can hear the screaming souls below. Whether that's true or not, that's a pretty deep hole. And while the project was scrapped in the 1990s due to lack of funding, the rusty remains of the drill are still intact. The defunct structure and the never-ending hole beneath it represent a time when world superpowers needed to show off their technological and engineering advancements. While many of us have heard of the space race, the Kola Super Deep Borehole was part of a race to the deep frontier, and the Soviets won this race in 1989, when the Kola Super Deep Borehole became the deepest man-made hole on Earth. Number 9. Large Hadron Collider Sitting on the border of France and Switzerland, nearly 600 feet below the Earth's surface, is the Large Hadron Collider. The Large Hadron Collider, or LHC for short, lies in a massive tunnel 27 kilometers in circumference and is the world's largest high-energy particle collider. The LHC was built deep underground by the European Organization for Nuclear Research in collaboration with over 10,000 scientists from hundreds of universities and laboratories around the globe. The LHC is another scientific endeavor that needs to stay far away from the cosmic radiation of the surface and functions best at subterranean depths. Many physicists use it to study the laws governing the interactions and forces among subatomic particles, the deep structures of space and time, and quantum mechanics. But over the years, the LHC has shattered records in the world of particle collisions, and as of 2018 has been shut down to undergo further upgrades to the decades-old technology. But perhaps some of the universe's biggest secrets are best kept deep, deep underground. Number 8. Guoliang Tunnel Back in the day, the only way to reach the Chinese village of Guoliang was to take the narrow and treacherous path that was carved right into the side of the Taihong Mountains. And while that may have been one hell of a scenic route, the trek along it was arduous and one false step meant sudden death. The local villagers weren't waiting for the help of the government to get things done. A small group of people put their heads together, and in 1972 they started to dig a tunnel. Because why go around the mountain when you can just go straight through it? The group was small, made of just 13 humble people, and while they wanted to dig this tunnel during more modern times, the people of Guoliang didn't have access to things like excavators, bulldozers, or something seemingly trivial as dynamite. So the only thing they could do was get to digging by hand. That's right, it took 26 hands five years to dig a tunnel about three quarters of a mile long, 16 feet tall, and 13 feet wide. So, the Guoliang Tunnel may not be the biggest in the world, but considering how it was built, you have to tip your hat to the people who created it with their bare hands. 
At the most difficult stage of the dig, the group was only able to dig about three feet a day. The entire endeavor was so tough that three people even died in the process. In the end, not only did this tunnel in the mountain change the lives of the villagers, giving them better access in and out, but the tunnel has also become a big tourist attraction over the last few decades. Remember to never doubt human ingenuity and spirit. Number 7. London Underground North Line The tube, or the London Underground, is synonymous with the city. With two million riders a day all packed like sardines on their way to home, work, or even just taking it for fun, you have to remember how much work goes into something like that. And while it may feel ultra-modern, the London Underground North Line as we know it today was specifically built in 1940, less than a year after England had entered World War II. Not only is the northern line of the tube one of the longest railway tunnels in the United Kingdom, but it's also one of the longest tunnels in existence, sprawling over 17 miles. This line makes up a series of connected tubes and tunnels, all of which needed to bore through the solid bedrock under the city streets. You have to hand it to the excavation crews, because all of this was done without modern technology, and much of the actual construction began before the 20th century. And thankfully, there's a map, because with 17 miles of underground tunnels, you can only imagine how easy it can be to get lost down there. Number 6. Delaware Aqueduct New York has the best tap water in the world. It's what helps make the city's trademark bagels and pizzas so amazing. It's a simple luxury that many New Yorkers take for granted. But where does all of that great tap water come from? Well, a lot of it is coming from the Delaware Aqueduct, which takes the water from four different reservoirs along the Hudson River, sending it through pumping stations before finally bringing it up to New York. But seeing as how it's on this list, the Delaware Aqueduct is also one of the biggest tunnels in history. This aqueduct was built between the years 1939 and 1945, and as of today carries nearly one and a half billion gallons of water through it a day, making up for about half of the Big Apple's water supply. That much water is going to need a lot of space to flow through, so it's a good thing that the tunnel's just over 13 feet wide and a stunning 85 miles long, making it one of the longest tunnels not just in the world today, but ever built. Something that monstrous needs a great deal of upkeep, and it's certainly seen its fair share of leaks during its century-long lifespan. The Delaware Aqueduct sprung a leak in the 1970s, which releases between 10 and 36 million gallons of water, enough to quench the thirst of half a million people. And so the city of New York has spent billions of dollars since then to not only monitor the leaks, but temporarily repair them as well. That must be one big leaky faucet. Number 5. Channel Tunnel Construction of the world-famous Channel Tunnel began back in 1988, and once the 13,000 workers called it a day, it opened up in May of 1994. As the name may imply, the Channel Tunnel runs under the English Channel, connecting the United Kingdom to France, and it's one of the most important pieces of infrastructure in Europe. The Channel Tunnel is made of three tunnels, two of which are made for trains, while the smaller tunnel in the middle acts as the service tunnel. But traveling from the UK to France seems like it would not just take a mighty long time, but a whole lot of tunnel too. The Channel Tunnel is one of the longest tunnels in the world at over 31 miles from end to end. 24 miles of that stretch is spent totally underwater, making it the longest of its kind in the world. From terminal to terminal, the entire trip takes about 35 minutes, and so as you can probably imagine, digging these tunnels was not an easy feat. These workers needed to use multiple giant boring machines, each of which was 750 feet long and weighed over 15,000 tons, and busted through all of that underground chalk at a snail's pace of just 15 feet per hour. That's some thick chalk. So, on top of the 13,000 workers, it took 11 tunnel boring machines to build the Channel Tunnel. Number 4. Burlington Bunker Burlington isn't just a coat factory, it's also one of the most impressive underground tunnels in the world. The Cold War was a wild time for everyone, with tensions between the United States and the former Soviet Union at an all-time high. Everyone was stockpiling weapons, attempting to develop new destructive and disruptive technologies, and no one really knew what was going to happen. So both sides started building underground bunkers, so that in the event of a nuclear apocalypse, they could hole up there for a while. And while some of these were just small, boring bunkers, the Burlington Bunker was more like a post-apocalyptic city. 
So the British government built the Burlington Bunker, a 35-acre complex 100 feet beneath Corsham Village. It was built in the 1950s. These 35 acres worth of tunnels featured all sorts of amenities, like office spaces, hospitals, sleeping quarters, telephones, and even cafeterias. Everything humanity's final survivors will need to start anew. There was enough space here to keep the British Prime Minister and 4,000 of his most trusted administrators to hide out during world-ending occurrences. Luckily, though, the Brits never needed to use the Burlington Bunker, but it still remains somewhat operational until 2004, just in case. Number 3. Seikan Tunnel Giving the Channel Tunnel a really long run for its money is none other than Japan's Seikan Tunnel. This tunnel is an undersea tunnel that links the main island of Honshu with the northern island of Hokkaido. In fact, the Seikan Tunnel is the second largest tunnel in the world stretching out over 33 miles, with about half of that span lying under the Sugaru Strait. Inside of the Seikan Tunnel is a quintessential high-speed rail line, but one thing that was not high-speed was the construction. The project began in 1964 and wasn't completed until 1988, taking 3,000 workers to complete. Unfortunately, the construction of the Seikan Tunnel was so difficult that 34 of those workers died from things like flooding and cave-ins. But ironically, despite the convenience of the Seikan Tunnel, most people still rely on air travel to travel between Hokkaido and Honshu because the cost is almost the same, and an airplane will get you there slightly faster, even though the Shinkansen bullet train began service in the tunnel in 2016. But the biggest fans, however, of the Seikan Tunnel are the shipping industry. This tunnel sees hundreds of freight trains running goods back and forth on a daily basis. And to this day, the Seikan Tunnel is one of the greatest achievements in infrastructure anywhere. Number 2. Desert Tron Better known as the Desert Tron, the superconducting supercollider was the proposed particle accelerator complex that would have been the most powerful of its kind in the world. And where better to have one of these bad boys than in Texas? The most famous super collider for a long time was the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland, and as always, it was important for the United States to not only keep up with the times, but to make sure they do it bigger and better. Work on the Desert Tron began at the tail end of the 1980s, and were able to bore 15 miles of tunnels and sink in 17 shafts in a 54-mile radius in just a few years. But it ran up a serious bill, and by 1993, the United States Congress had had enough when the project's budget exploded from over $4 billion to $11 billion. Having adjusted for inflation, that's well over $27 billion of tax money that were not spent but wasted on the project. And so in the end, the United States government was left with a giant hole not just in its wallet, but in the ground, too. Number 1. Goddard Base Tunnel Back in 1947, the Swiss engineer Carl Edward Gruner dreamt of creating a massive tunnel, unrivaled in length and depth, in his home country's Goddard Mountain Range. Finally, in 2016, his dream became a reality with the construction of the Goddard Base Tunnel. The tunnel sits at over 8,000 feet below ground, and goes on for over 35 miles, and costs $12 billion to bore. The opening of the tunnel was so monumental that the leaders of Germany, Italy, and France were some of the guests in attendance, and tens of thousands of people gathered for an opening festival. The tunnel was even given its very own theme song. The Gotthard Base Tunnel is now home to a high-speed rail line that makes the trip between Zurich and Milan in about two and a half hours. This tunnel is a marvel of Swiss ingenuity and brings a great sense of pride to the country, so much so that the Swiss citizens agreed to pay an extra $1,300 per person in taxes to help complete the project, which saw two massive boring machines meet in the middle, marking the tunnel's completion. It looks like these people's ties to their community really run deep. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.